Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1675. The topic is Q&A and the title is Workout Intensity Concept, Adjusting the Pyramid. Hmm. So I was talking with a client recently and they were saying that they're feeling beat up. Uh, What happened basically is we started working together less than a month ago. And they've been coming into the deciding to work with me. They've been coming in feeling just kind of beat up, tired, joints are hurting. They have some big goals, but they're just really far behind on recovery. And they're getting frustrated because they want to progress, but it just seems like they just can't do enough to move forward. So we started talking, and essentially what's happening is they're, they're actually doing too much to move forward. And an example of that was they said they were in a rush one night. They were supposed to get their workout in, but, you know, plans changed, life was crazy, and they had 20 minutes for a workout. So they said that they worked up to a near one rep max on squats and then a single max effort set of 10 reps. In our discussion, I politely said uh, (laughs) that was not a great idea. (laughs) If you're feeling like crap, doing really heavy High intense things is the complete opposite of what you want to do. I understand why they did it. This is why I did that when I was younger too. You're frustrated. You want to move forward. You're mad at your body for being weak. And you just think, I'm just going to beat the crap out of it and force it to progress. Well, that's dumb. And I know because I've did it and it doesn't work. So to, to understand it or put some context around it, we decided, uh, like I was telling them, is adjusting what they do in their workouts or adjusting how they would put together a program uh, because they also advise other people on what to do with their programming. We want to think of it as a pyramid concept. Now, this isn't anything that I created. Uh, the first time I ever heard of a pyramid was through uh, Louis Simmons in Westside, Bar- Westside Barbell. He had talked about kind of what you do in your programming for exercise selection. There's a pyramid scheme being like at the top of the peak would be is like the strongest you can be for one rep. If we think of a pyramid, the the base of the pyramid is much wider than the peak is. The peak is just one singular point. (laughs) You know, the base is really wide. Well, if we think of physical fitness, if we think of exercise selection, if we think of what we should be doing in our workouts, in our programs, the base is like body weight movements, um, like isolative movements, dynamic warm-ups. It's, it's low weight movements that focus on movement quality, uh, overall mobility and mechanics, maybe isolating out singular weaknesses in terms of muscles or, or movement uh, pat- patterns. The idea of the base is just it's a lot of low-level stuff. Now, Louis Simmons also referred to it as GPP, General Physical Preparedness. He was a big proponent of sleds. People would carry, like, uh, drag sleds. They would drag them behind them. They would drag them, you know, walking backwards facing the sled. Uh, just any other way that they could possibly move a sled. That was one of the way he did it. Uh, they also did a lot of rope work. They did wheelbarrows, a lot of farmer's carries and odds and ends. They did a lot of work on um, their belt squat. Uh, so there was, there was a lot of just low-level movements and i mean low levels in like low weight load low intensity now they were very challenging it's like i've did like i've done like a five minute march on our belt squat to work on hip health and like calf growth good god that is horrible so it is intensity in effort but it's not intensity in weight load it's not intensity on the joint stress the joint demand these are all of the movements that help you get better at your big movement so if I want to get better at squat, I might break down and say, okay, I want to work on, you know, the the knees. I want the knees to be strong so that way my hips don't raise first when I come out of a squat. But I also do want my hips to be strong so that way I have nice strong uh, glutes and lower back. So I might break down my squats into something that works on my quadriceps and kind of knees. So it'd be like, say, a front squat, something with an upright torso. I might then want to work on hip hinging, something for my glutes and lower back. So maybe an RDL. And then also you want to work on unilateral balance so that way you don't have one dominant side over the other. So maybe walking lunges. So you would think of like your accessories to getting better at a squat could be a front squat, RDL, and walking lunges. 
And then, okay, well, how do I prepare myself for front squats, RDL, and walking lunges? Maybe it'll be good for me to stretch my calves. If I stretch my calves, that'll help me hit parallel better uh, without as many uh, movement issues in front squats. I also want to maybe work on opening up my adductors and hamstrings, make sure they're prepared and ready to move, so that way they can stretch in the RDL without my lower back having to be compromised and be rounded. Then I'd think about, okay... You know, I want to make sure my my hips are warmed up, my quads are warmed up, maybe my hip flexors are really tight, and that'll make going down on the front squat really hard. So I would think to open up and stretch the muscles of my hips, uh, make sure my knees are warmed up, make sure my calves are loosened up. That's the base of the pyramid. Then the middle of the pyramid would be like the front squats, the RDLs, and the walking lunges. Those are weighted movements, compound movements, but they're more isolative in nature than just a simple squat bench deadlift. So when we think of a pyramid, the base of what we do is all the things we do to get ready to do the big thing. <laughs> so everybody wants to, you know, do their uh, social media moment where they post a PR on squats, but no one really sees what it goes into making that PR. So a lot of times when I write programming, and we have free program examples on our website, www.brutalirongym.com. You can go to free program examples, pretty good name there. Uh, on that page, there's literally just programs you can print if you want to see what they look like and perform them and do them. But we start with some kind of movement preparation circuit, something to open up movement and mobility in the hips, something to activate kind of bracing and proper positioning for the core, and we work on thoracic kind of upper back and shoulder health. We do a circuit of that. Then... Typically, there's going to be some type of more movement-based circuit. So you might do leaning over Cossack squats to help open up the adductors, maybe calf stretches, maybe some body weight alternating reverse lunges just to get blood in the knees, loosen up some muscles, get everything moving and grooving. We would do that paired with the warm-ups of squats, and then we would go into squats. That's a typical kind of flow to a workout. There's a lot of stuff you do in the base of the pyramid. Body weight isolation movements, low weight movements, kind of preparatory movements, conditioning movements. Then we have the middle of the pyramid, which are more like they're weighted, they're compound movements, but they're more isolative in nature. So like a front squat is lower than what you could do for a back squat because it's a little more isolative into the knees, into the quadriceps. An RDL might be a little bit lighter than what you could do for a conventional deadlift because you're taking away that leg drive off the floor if you're thinking of a conventional deadlift. So they're still weighted, they're still challenging, but they're, they're more isolative or broken down into segmental parts of the main movement, which would be like squat bench, deadlift, overhead press, uh, you know, big, big, big aggressive movements. So that's what your training should look like. The majority of what you should do is in the base in the middle. And then the very small amount of what you do is the tippy top, the big heavy stuff. So overwhelmingly, if we think of a pyramid, the base is the widest part, the middle is the middle, <laughs> and the top end, not a lot there, right? It's a very small amount of volume, and, it's, and it wouldn't be as frequent in your training. With that in mind, we want to then ask ourselves as we go into a workout or as we go into writing a program, how do you feel? What state is your body in? What state is your mental health, emotional health in? If you're feeling beat up, you want to you wanna lower down that pyramid. You want to flatten out the pyramid. You want to do even more base work and a little less top end work. So instead of working up to a one rep max on squats, maybe you'll work up to a, you know, a set of two or three with the weight that you think you could probably could have done for five. So you leave a rep or two in reserve, RIR, reps in reserve. Or if you use an RPE scale, rate of perceived exertion, maybe you work up to an 8 RPE instead of a 10. <laughs> instead of an eye bulging out of your skull, 10. You still go heavy, but it's just not all out. If you're feeling beat up, that's the better way to train, is you flatten out your pyramid. You widen the base, you bring the peak down. Now, the opposite of that would be as if you're prepping for a competition. If you're prepping for a strength-based competition, say a powerlifting meet or a strongman competition, anything where you want maximal strength, you want to heighten your peak, but you need to make the pyramid skinnier. You need a skinnier pyramid. So you push your top-end stuff higher in intensity, maybe higher in frequency. kind of depends on the programming style you're following. But you have to bring the base down so that way you don't overstress your joints. 
So when I get somebody ready for a powerlifting competition, it depends on the person, but in general, for four to eight weeks before the competition, we would we would start to reduce the number of sets that we use in the base, the number of sets that we use in the middle work, so that way it allows us to be fresher and have more like to give to our top end work. So we kind of create a, a, a skinnier pyramid, so taller, skinnier. Whereas when you're feeling like crap, it's a flatter, wider pyramid. So you adjust what you do based on how you're feeling. So if you have 20 minutes to work out, but you're feeling like crap, you do not want to do the tippy top of a pyramid. <laughs> because if you feel like crap, that means your, your base of your health is subpar. So your, your strength performance, that top end of your pyramid is going to be subpar or going to put you at high risk of injury. If you haven't been eating well, sleeping well, you're high stressed, your joints are just feeling like crap, your mind is all over the place, you don't want to put maximal effort weight on your body. You might survive it, but you might not. You might get an injury. So you want to think to yourself is, is how do I feel right now? If I'm thinking about making a singular workout or I'm thinking about writing the next, you know, two, four, six, eight weeks of programming, I would think to myself is how do I feel? If I'm feeling pretty good, I stay with the status quo. If I'm feeling kind of beat up, maybe I want to flatten out that pyramid a little bit, pull back a little bit on the intensity of my top end of my pyramid, give a little more effort to that base, that like that self-care kind of mobility work, just that GPP, general physical preparedness, just move, get blood flow through the joints, but not overly taxing. If you're coming out of a phase like that, or you're thinking to yourself, man, I feel freaking great. I'm like, everything is in line. My food's great. My sleep's great. I'm not too stressed right now compared to normal. <laughs> uh, I feel like I can really give some good effort here. Then you want to make a more higher and skinnier pyramid. You want to go ahead and try to push that peak a little bit. See what you can do. If you think of programming, whether it's a workout or, a, you know, a month long, week long, you know, weeks long program. If you think about how you feel going into that program going into that workout. It's going to help you better select the right movements, the right types of movements to help you still continue to progress towards your goals. If you're low on food, low on sleep, if you have high stress and you think to yourself, is this is just frustrating. I feel like crap. I'm so mad about feeling like crap. And you just force an aggressive workout. It will not make you feel like less crap. You will feel like more crap. <laughs> it will not make you feel better. You might have a high of adrenaline endorphins after that workout. And if you didn't get injured, you might be like, man, I'm so freaking proud of myself. I destroyed that. I felt like crap, but I went in there and I just freaking crushed it. The bad part is, is when you come down from that high, you're going to feel as bad or not, if not worse than you felt beforehand. It doesn't fix it. You can't fix feeling like crap by doing things that beat the shit out of you. That doesn't make the body feel better. That doesn't fix the problem. You have to do the harder work, the much harder work, to address your nutrition, your sleep, and your stress. You're going to lie to yourself and tell yourself, oh, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to bust my ass and I'm going to have a great workout and that'll prove how tough I am. Bullshit. Get your food in order. Get a better sleep pattern. Work on reducing your stress. That is way harder. Because it's not just something you can do in 20, 30, 40 minutes or an hour. You have to actually examine your life, examine your priorities, examine all the dumbass behaviors you do that hold you back and work on correcting them. It's frustrating. It's a crap load of work. And you're the problem. So you have to say, I'm in my own way. What am I screwing up and how can I fix it? That's crappy. <laughs> but that is how you get uncrappy. Just being a butthead and forcing one really hard workout doesn't fix anything. It's just going to make you feel like more crap. So do the harder work. If you want to be tough, do the real tough thing. 
is address why you feel like crap in the first place. Address your nutrition. Address your sleep. Address your stress. Maybe you have to get your hormones checked. You have to actually do a deep dive into the quality of life and figure out why am I feeling like crap all the time. That's much harder. Much, much, much harder. People don't want to do that. So they lie to themselves and they they do that crazy hardcore workout thinking that they're super tough. No. That was the easy way out. That was a cop out. Do the harder work. If you feel like crap, why do you feel like crap? Look at your food, your sleep, your stress. Dive deeper into it. So in general, when you're creating a workout, when you're creating a program, remember the pyramid. What you do should be adjusted based on how you're feeling. If you feel like crap, bring the peak down, do more base work stuff. If you're feeling great and you want to kind of test and see where you're at, push the peak up, but go ahead and bring in that middle, bring in that bottom. Make sure you reduce the volume there a little bit so that way you don't beat your crap out of yourself and hurt your joints. And then after you hit that peak, all of a sudden you're back into a crappy state. So adjust your pyramid. Think about what you're doing today, what you're doing in this next program as an investment into a better future. How can what I do today make me better tomorrow? Make me better in a week? Make me better in a month? Not just how can I, you know, vent some frustration. Not can how, how can I prove how tough I am? Say, is this going to make me healthier? Is this going to make me better? Is this going to push me towards my goals long term? That's how you decide. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. I do think thinking of what you do as a pyramid is very helpful conceptually. You know, if you feel like crap, flatten that pyramid out. Don't do as crazy, intense, heavy stuff. Focus more on movement quality, on mobility work, and then go look in your food, your sleep, and your stress. If you're feeling great or you're getting ready for a competition, go ahead and push that peak up. Go for it. Bring in the middle work. You know, instead of, you know, three sets of front squats, three sets of RDLs, and three sets of walking lunges, maybe just do two sets of each. Just bring in that middle a little bit. Let that pyramid be a little skinny. So that way you're fresher and you feel better and you can hit that peak uh, with a little more to give. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. Remember, you can check out on our website. We have free programs, a bunch of programming examples. That's all free, www.brutalironjim.com. We also have our live monthly programming service for only $50 a month. You can get great programming that would show you, you know, all this balance of the base, the middle, and the top end. It's all there. $50 a month. You can pick whatever topic you want. We have powerlifting, female shape development, pure bodybuilding. We have functional um, uh, longevity. And then we have functional athleticism. You can read more about those programs on our website. Read more about that service. It comes with unlimited Q&A. You can actually ask any question you want and I'll answer it. I go through and answer everyone's questions every single week. You get one-on-one education along with great programming. That's live monthly programming. And again, that's on our website as well. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, you have any feedback, any suggestions, just let me know. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like our podcast, please share it. The more people we share it with, the more people we can help. That's the whole point of the podcast is just to help as many people as we can. Thank you to those who donate to support the podcast. We do have a high hosting cost on all the different platforms and whatnot, so I appreciate the financial support as it goes towards those costs and just kind of reduces that for us a little bit. Uh, If you do want to donate, you can do that on our website, www.brutalironjim.com. If you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels, on Instagram and on YouTube. You can find us and please follow us under the name Brutal Iron Jam. As always, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.